Hi, this is Andy Teach, host of Andy's Awesome Adventures, and welcome to Venice, Italy. St. Mark's Square, or Piazza San Marco as it's known in Italian, is the number one attraction in Venice. It features the beautiful St. Mark's Basilica, the imposing Campanile, the clock tower, along with cafes, restaurants, and museums. The square was originally constructed in the 9th century as a small square dotted with trees and was laid out in front of the original St. Mark's Basilica, at the time a small chapel which is part of the Doge's Palace. The square was separated from the palace by a small canal. Already a central gathering place for Venetians, the piazza was enlarged in 1174 after the canal and an adjoining dock were filled in. The square became paved with bricks in 1267 in a herringbone pattern. In 1735, the bricks were replaced with natural stone and laid in a more complicated pattern. The design marked the location where merchants could set up their stalls. As the largest square in the city and the only one given the designation of Piazza, St. Mark's Square has always been the location of important government buildings and other facilities central to the goings-on in Venice. The centerpiece of the Piazza is St. Mark's Basilica, Commissioned in 1071 by Doge Domenico Contarini, this amazing church is built in Venetian Byzantine style, a mixture of Western and Eastern styles. Nicknamed the Chiesa d'Oro, or Church of Gold, because of its opulence, it has been the seat of the Patriarch of Venice, Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Venice, since 1807. As I mentioned earlier, the original St. Mark's Church was situated inside the complex of the Doge's Palace and was constructed in 828. It was built to house the relics of St. Mark the Evangelist, which were supposedly stolen by Venetian merchants from Alexandria, Egypt several years earlier. The church burned down in 976 during an uprising. It was rebuilt twice, the last time in 1063. At that time, the power of the Venetian Republic had risen dramatically, and the new basilica, consecrated in 1094, would come to symbolize the Republic's growing power and wealth. This basilica is the one we see today. It was the Doge's private chapel until 1807 when it became the city's cathedral. The Fourth Crusade in particular gave St. Mark's Basilica its riches. This was the crusade that ended in 1204 with the conquest of Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul. A lot of treasure was shipped to Venice and installed in St. Mark's Basilica during this time. The exterior of the basilica is quite ornate and has been added to over the centuries. Historians note that whenever Venetian vessels returned from the Orient, they brought something for the basilica whether it be a frieze, column, or something else from an ancient building elsewhere in the world. Technically, the exterior is divided into three registers, lower, upper, and domes. The lower consists of five arch portals, the center one slightly larger, surrounded by marble columns. Above the portals are mosaics, representing stories from the Bible, allegorical figures, and events in the lives of Christ, the Virgin Mary, St. Mark, and other saints. Above the large central window is the winged lion, symbol of Venice. On the central balcony are statues of Greek horses, installed in 1254. The Horses of St. Mark, also known as the Triumphal Quadrica, is a set of Roman bronze statues of four horses, originally part of a monument depicting a quadrica, a four-horse carriage used for chariot racing. The horses were placed in the facade of St. Mark's Basilica after the sack of Constantinople. They remained there until looted by Napoleon in 1797, who brought them to Paris, but they were returned to Venice in 1815. The sculptures have been removed from the facade and placed in the interior of St. Mark's for conservation purposes. The ones in the facade are replicas. The statues at the top of the central portal depict St. Mark and the angels. 
The Basilica has a separate campanile or bell tower that stands 323 feet tall and it's one of the city's most recognizable landmarks. The first tower standing at the site of the campanile was built in the 7th century, possibly as a lighthouse. The first clock tower dates from around the year 900. Throughout the centuries, it was rebuilt a number of times, finally reaching its current look around 1513 after restoration following a damaging earthquake. Several disasters hit the tower in the following centuries. A fire occurred in the early 17th century and renovations were undertaken. In 1745, the Campanile di San Marco was struck by fire again, with the damage causing a collapse that had killed several people. Subsequent renovations added a lightning rod. On July 14, 1902, the Campanile di San Marco collapsed completely due to large cracks in the structure. The local government was quick to decide to rebuild the tower and after 10 years of construction, it was reopened on April 25, 1912. Care was taken to create an exact copy of the tower as it existed before its collapse, with the exception of some structural reinforcements required to prevent another collapse in the future. Atop the belfry is a section decorated with walking lions in honor of St. Mark and the goddess of justice representing Venice. On top of the bell tower is a pyramidal spire with a golden weather vane on top, which is in the form of the angel Gabriel. The five bells of the Campanile di San Marco each had a specific purpose. The largest rang at the beginning and end of the workday, one rang at midday, another rang to summon members to council meetings, a fourth proclaimed the session of the Senate, and the last announced executions. We took the elevator to the top and were rewarded with some great views of Venice. At the base of the tower is the Logetta, an ornate Baroque-style podium with marble bas-reliefs and bronze sculptures created by Jacopo Sansovino, a Florence architect and sculptor, between 1537 and 1549. The Logetta suffered major damage due to the collapse of the bell tower in 1902, so what we see today is about 50% original, as much restoration was done at that time. The bas-reliefs depict allegorical scenes, with Jupiter as an allegory of Crete, Venice representing justice, and Venus as an allegory of Cyprus. In the four niches toward the bottom, Sansovino placed the bronze statues of Minerva, Apollo, Mercury, and Peace. The Logetta served at various times as a gathering place for nobles and for meetings of the Venetian officials responsible for the administration of the treasury of St. Mark's Basilica. Because of its location directly in front of the Porta della Carta, the most important entry to the Doge's palace, the Logetta was also used from 1569 onward as a sentry post to provide security for the aristocracy during the meetings of the Great Council. Beginning in 1734, the Logetta was additionally the site for the public lottery. The Torre del Orologio is a Renaissance bell tower. It's also known as St. Mark's Clock Tower or the Moore's Clock Tower. The clock was built from 1496 to 1499 by Moro Caduci. While the tower and the clock date from the end of the 15th century, the mechanism of the clock has been subsequently altered. It was placed where the clock would be visible from the waters of the lagoon and gave notice to everyone of the wealth and glory of Venice. On a terrace at the top of the tower are two great bronze figures who ring the bell hourly. One is old and the other young to show the passing of time, and although said to represent shepherds or giants, they are known as the Moors because of the dark patina acquired by the bronze. The bell is original and is signed by Simone Campanato, who cast it in 1497. <laughs> Below this level is the wing line of St. Mark with the open book before a blue background with gold stars. There was originally a statue of a doge kneeling before the lion, but in 1797, after the city had surrendered to Napoleon, it was removed by the French who were purging the city of all symbols of the old regime. Next is a semicircular gallery with statues of the seated virgin and child. On either side are two large blue panels showing the time the hour on the left in Roman numerals, and the minutes at five-minute intervals on the right in Arabic numerals. Below this is the great clock face in blue and gold inside a fixed circle of marble, engraved with the 24 hours of the day in Roman numerals. A golden pointer with an image of the sun moves round this circle and indicates the hour of the day. Within the marble circle beneath the sun pointer are the signs of the zodiac in gold, which revolve slightly more slowly than the pointer to show the position of the sun in the zodiac. In the middle of the clock faces the earth and the moon, which revolves to show its phases, surrounded by stars which are fixed in position. The background is a blue enamel. 
When you stand in St. Mark's Square, your attention is focused on the Basilica, Bell Tower, and Clock Tower, but nestled all around the square, aside from cafes and restaurants, are some museums and other buildings which are easy to overlook. This is the Procuratie Vecchi, buildings that house the apartments and offices of the St. Mark's attorneys. They were built in the 12th century and restored in the early 16th century. The Olivetti Exhibition Center features 20th century Italian architecture. The Career Museum is situated in the former Royal Palace, it was established in 1830, and features art history and culture of Venice. Under the porch is the famous 18th century Café Florian, the longtime chic meeting place in Venice. The Procuratie Nuove, which provided more offices, was built in the mid-17th century. The National Archaeology Museum features ancient Greek and Roman sculptures, coins, and ceramics. Just around the corner is the Doge's Palace, or in Italian, Palazzo Ducale. It's a palace built in Venetian Gothic style. The palace was the residence of the Doge of Venice, the supreme authority of the former Venetian Republic. It was founded in 1340 and extended and modified in the following centuries. It became a museum in 1923. We visited the palace and it was definitely one of the highlights of Venice. Between Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Library is the Piazzetta San Marco. It is known for the two columns located there that pay homage to two of Venice's patrons, San Marco, St. Mark, which features a lion, the symbol of Venice, and Sant'Odaro, St. Theodore, the first patron saint of Venice. The columns were placed here in 1125 and have long served as the official gateway to the city as they welcome visitors from the east. Until the mid-18th century, the Piazzetta was also an area where criminals were executed. Hi, this is Andy Teach, host of Andy's Awesome Adventures, and welcome to Venice, Italy. When you visit St. Mark's Basilica, you experience several wow moments. The first wow moment is when you see the ornate exterior, which we will see in detail at the end of this video. The next wow moment is when you first enter the Basilica Narthex or porch area and you see the beautiful mosaics. This is just a taste of what's about to come. When you enter the Narthex, you will see beautiful biblical mosaics, many of them gold. Like the interior of the church, the mosaics represent stories from the Bible, allegorical figures, and events in the lives of Christ, the Virgin Mary, St. Mark, and other saints. The next and biggest wow moment is when you actually enter the church interior and you are face to face with 8 centuries of mosaics. It can be overwhelming to see the more than 85,000 square feet or 8,000 square meters of mosaics covering the walls, vaults and cupolas or enough mosaic to cover over one and a half American football fields. The mosaics were done mostly in gold which is why the basilica is called the Chiesa d'Oro or Church of Gold. When the basilica was built, Frescoes would have normally been painted, but due to the high humidity in Venice during the summer, frescoes would have suffered damage, so mosaics were installed instead. Those completed in the 12th century depict the New Testament, while those painted in the following century focus on the stories of the Old Testament. Also adorning the walls are the stories of the Virgin Mary, St. Peter, St. Clement, St. John the Evangelist, and of course, St. Mark. There are more than 500 columns and capitals in the basilica and most are Byzantine, dating between the 6th and 11th centuries. Some classical 3rd century capitals are mixed in too. The 4th Crusade in particular gave St. Mark's Basilica its richness. 
This was a crusade that ended in 1204 with the conquest of Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul. The result? A lot of treasure was shipped to Venice and installed in St. Mark's Basilica. St. Mark's five cupolas are covered with spectacular Byzantine mosaics which date from the 11th to the 13th centuries. Each dome has 16 windows. Mosaics also decorate the apse, choir, and the multiple chapels. The mosaics in the north cupola depict scenes from the life of St. John the Evangelist. They date from the first half of the 12th century. The mosaics represent the awakening of the two men killed by the poison drink intended for the apostles, St. John in the pose of an orant, who is someone who is praying or pleading, and the awakening of Drusiana. The West Pentecost Dome features the Twelve Apostles, who are illuminated by the Holy Spirit, represented by a dove. The silver beams are symbolic of the teachings of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. In the Prophet's Dome, Jesus is surrounded by the Prophets and the Virgin Mary, and there are images of the four evangelists in the pendentives. In the Ascension Dome, seated on a gold arc of light in front of a starry sky, Christ raises his right hand in benediction as four angels carry him. Around the central motif is the Virgin Mary, two flanking angels, and the twelve apostles who point upward. In the South Leonard Cupola, there is a cross on the top and figures of Saints Leonard, Clement, Blasius, and Nicholas. The altar of the Madonna de Mascoli features representations of the birth of Mary, the presentation in the temple, the Annunciation, the prophets David and Isaiah, the Virgin and Child, the Visitation, and statues of the saints Mark and Giovanni. Just within the left transept, under the dome of St. John, is the busiest chapel in St. Mark's, the Chapel of Madonna di Nicopea. The chapel was named after the 12th century icon of Our Lady, Bringer of Victory, which Byzantine emperors would carry into battle. Part of the hall from Constantinople in 1204, it has been worshipped ever since as the protectress of Venice. The image of the Virgin was closely associated with the imperial throne and the city of Constantinople itself. The icon is in its original Byzantine frame of gilded silver with gold enamel, pearls, and gemstones. The surface of the icon and the figure of Christ was badly damaged by the attachment of jewels and pearls to the icon by Venetian devotees of the icon. These were removed and the icon was restored. The face of the Virgin is very well preserved. The icon was meant to be seen from a great distance and in low light. Here, Christ, who is standing on Satan, goes into hell to save souls. Christ is grabbing the wrist of Adam with Eve right behind him so they won't be in limbo. Here you will see a late 14th century marble structure in Gothic style, consisting of 8 columns and 15 statues. This type of partition, which separates the nave from the presbytery, has Byzantine origins and is known as the iconostasis, meaning the part that supports the icons. Common to Byzantine churches, the marble rod screen is made of polychrome marble and is topped with a large crucifix and statues of the apostles. However, there are no icons as tradition would have it, but rather just the statues. On the two sides of the cross of Christ, we find the weeping virgin, St. John, and the twelve apostles. Behind these statues is the high altar area, an area we didn't go into but wish we had. You can see the tomb holding the relics and parts of the body of St. Mark the Evangelist. For a small fee, you can also see the Polidoro. It is a panel depicting the life of Christ, made of gold decorated with precious gems, sitting on columns decorated with 11th century reliefs. It was completed in 1342.
It's so easy just to look up the whole time you're in the basilica to see the stunning mosaics, but don't forget to look down to see the intricate floor. Marble inlay covers about 20,000 square feet, or 2,100 square meters in rich earth tones set in intricate geometrical and natural patterns. While most of the floor is geometric, it is lightened occasionally with animal and floral designs made with tiny pieces of marble or even glass. It is thought that the artists who created the floor, like those who did the mosaics above, came from Constantinople or Greece. The next wow moment you experience is when you visit the treasury and see the gold and silver relics. The treasury of Tesoro is full of the precious objects brought home by the Venetians from Constantinople in 1204 during the Crusades. With 283 pieces in gold, silver, and other precious materials, it is one of the most important and richest church treasuries in Europe, even after plundering by Napoleon and the sale of some of its gems to pay for restoration of the church in the early 1800s. Byzantine icons made of gold and silver, chalices, glassware, Islamic art, Venetian metalwork, enameled goldwork, and later, gifts from popes, European princes, and doges complete the collections.
The next wow moment is when you exit the church interior and walk past more mosaics in another porch area as you leave the basilica. While we saw a lot of St. Mark's Basilica, we didn't see or do everything, so here are some additional things to see and do. Climb the steps and go to the outside terrace next to the four horses. See St. Mark's relics. Pay a small fee to see the Polidoro. Visit the Baptistery. Visit St. Mark's Museum, which holds Persian carpets, fragments from mosaics, tapestries, and other church treasures. Most importantly, the original bronze horses of San Marco, which were obtained from Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade, are housed in the museum. Find out ahead of time what time the lights are on inside the basilica. Take a nighttime tour, which includes the crypt, which is usually closed to the public. an exception in Venice.
Well, it's getting a little more crowded here. I'm guessing the cruise ships have unloaded their passengers. And we just went to the top of the Campanile, the tower. Thankfully, it's an elevator only, no more stairs. About 10 stories up. Fantastic view of Venice. Doji's Palace, or Palazzo Ducale, sits on a site that was once occupied by a 10th century wooden stockade with watchtowers and moat, and later, another similar fort, both eventually destroyed by fire and other disasters. By the 14th century, the hierarchy of Venice decided that a grand palace was needed, a building representing the city's new wealth and power. Designs for the Doge's Palace were created by Filippo Calendario, who was later executed for treason in 1355. Because of Calendario's death, the Palazzo Ducale was constructed in two phases. The eastern wing was built between 1301 to 1340, and the western wing took an additional 110 years to build and was completed in 1450. The architectural style is generally referred to as Venetian Gothic, a Gothic structure with Byzantine influences. I wonder if that's one of the original gondolas. The courtyard of Doge's palace was largely designed by Antonio Rizzo after a fire in 1483. Although it's gothic, the ornate columns, niches, and turrets feature Renaissance influences. This is the ornate facade of the Foscari portico, which was commissioned by Doge Francesco Foscari in the mid-15th century. It combines elements of both gothic and Renaissance architecture. The facade is decorated with ancient Roman sculptures, and the clock was added by Bartolomeo Marnapola in the 17th century. The statue featured in the lower center of the tower depicts the Duke of Urbino. This is the giant staircase featuring the two large statues of Mars and Neptune, which were sculpted by Jacopo Sansovino and placed here in 1567. The statues represent Venice's power on land and in the sea. To the right of the giant staircase is the senator's courtyard, where members of the Senate gather before government meetings. Love the architecture, look at that, beautiful. This is one of the domes of St. Mark's Basilica, which used to be the Doge's Chapel before it became a public place of worship. La Scala d'Oro, or the Golden Staircase, was designed by Jacopo Sansovino in 1538 and was finished by Scarpanino in 1559. The staircase, which is covered with stuccos, was once reserved for the most important guests and was used as a staircase of honor. The Atrio Quadrato, or Square Atrium, was done around 1564. 
foreign leaders and ambassadors waited in this room before entering the more formal parts of the palace. On the ceiling carved in the wood is an octagonal painting by Jacopo Tintoretto, depicting Doge Girolamo receiving from justice the sword and the scale. The Sala Delle Quattro Porte, a room of the four doors, was once the seat of the Collegio. This room was used as an antechamber to the Senate Hall. It was designed by Andrea Palladio and is decorated in white and gold. The paintings celebrate Venice's power, but the most famous one is Doge Antonio Gramani kneeling in front of Faith with the presence of St. Mark by Tizian, who painted it from 1521 to 1523. The four doors which give it its name are innately framed in precious eastern marble. Each features an allegorical sculptural group that refers to the virtues which should inspire those who take on the responsibilities of government. In 1574 there was a fire in this area of the palace which caused severe damage in this room and those immediately after it, fortunately without resulting in any structural damage. The wooden fixtures and decor were replaced as soon as possible. The present appearance is the result of that work produced by Antonio de Ponte to designs by Andrea Palladio and Antonio Ruscani. The coffered ceiling with stucco decoration by Giovanni Cambi, known as Barbada, contains frescoes of mythological subjects and of the cities and regions under Venetian rule. Painted by Tintoretto from 1578 onward, this decorative scheme was designed to show a close link between the foundation of Venice, its long tradition of independence, and the historical mission of the Venetian democracy, a program of self-celebration that could already be seen in the Golden Staircase. The Sala del Ante Collegio, or Antechamber, features this wooden fireplace bellows from the 17th century from Doge Alvise Cantarini. This was the waiting room before being admitted to the presence of the Doge. On the walls are four paintings by Tintoretto. This room was restored after the 1574 fire. The Sala del Collegio, or Council Chamber, was the room of the Doge's hearings. Like other rooms, it was designed by Palladio and built by Antonio de Ponte. The room is decorated with paintings by Paolo Veronese and Jacopo Tintoretto. The ceiling is one of Veronese's masterpieces and celebrates the good government of the Republic together with the faith on which it rests and the virtues that guide and strengthen it. The Sala del Consiglio dei Dieci, or Chamber of the Council of Ten, is where the Council of Ten were held in great secrecy. They granted the citizens security. In the middle is a copy of an original painting by Veronese depicting Jove striking the vices. The Sala della Bussola, or compass room, is the room where the condemned and the people waiting to be interrogated waited. Lameria, or the Armory, 
is made up of several rooms which display 15th and 16th century suits of armor, swords and crossbows. Many are inscribed or painted with CX for Council of Ten. There are examples of firearms from the 16th and 17th centuries, torture apparatus, suits of armor for horses and armor used in tournaments, crossbows, swords and Turkish artifacts taken at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. <laughs> To me this is the highlight of Doge's palace, the Sala del Major Consiglio or Chamber of the Grand Council. It is 15.4 meters or 50.5 feet high, 25 meters or 82 feet deep and 54 meters or 177 feet long. After the big fire of 1577, the hall was rebuilt by Antonio del Ponte. This massive painting is the largest in the world. It depicts the paradise and was painted by Jacopo Tintoretto and his school. At one point being old and nearly blind, he had to ask for help finishing the painting which itself is 7 meters or 23 feet high and 22 meters or 72 feet long. The other walls celebrate the major events in the history of Venice. We are on the Bridge of Sighs. Venice's famous Bridge of Sighs was designed by Antonio Contino and was built at the beginning of the 17th century. The bridge was intended to connect the old prison and interrogation rooms in the Doge's palace to the new prison which was situated directly across the river. There are a few theories as to how the bridge got its name. The first one involves the prisoners that walked across the bridge on their way to the executioner. The prisoners would sigh as they crossed the bridge, probably catching their last glimpse of the outside world. Even though executions had stopped by the time the bridge was built, many prisoners probably did cross the bridge and may have not seen freedom again, at least not for several years. Here's where we were earlier, the bridge of sighs. Another story says that if a couple kisses under the bridge while drifting below on a gondola at sunset, they will enjoy eternal love. Thus, the sighs are said to have come from lovers who are overwhelmed by the romance of the whole scene. Through the Bridge of Sighs, we reach the new prisons built here in the 16th century which features stone walls and iron windows.
are now in the Palace Museum. Oh, wow. The Museo dell'Opera, or Palace Museum, features original capitals from the 14th and 15th centuries that were restored beginning in 1876 and are now exhibited on their original columns in these six rooms of the museum. The museum is divided by an ancient wall and great blocks of stone, a remnant of an earlier version of the palace. The rooms also contain fragments of statues and important architectural and decorative works in stone from the facades of the palace. 